Yeah. Um, Michael, what about your research? Well, um, I I was also like reading a lot. Like I read, you know, Wikipedia and everything that I could find on Google. I read the Time magazine thing, and I wasn't really getting uh, a, a real gist of what made him tick. You know, like what motivated somebody to actually um, put himself in harm's way in order for him to accomplish what he thought is justice. Um, so, I, but I did have a, a, a bit more understanding when I when I talked to Mika uh, Camrena, and you understand. I just I, I had just you know, that's his wife. wife. That's his wife, right. sorry. Um, and so I, I had just done, you know, Ant-Man, which is like, you know, the guy wants to be likable, wants to love everybody, he's a lovable dude, he thinks he is. And this one, um, it was different. It was, it was a person that was just fed up with the injustices, especially when he was looking at it, and, and, and he can point it and, 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 and point out the injustices and see who's... That the, that the police were involved, the local police, the federal police, and then politicians, and then the government, and nobody was doing anything about it. Everybody was turning, you know, a blind eye to it, and he got fed up with it. And then I think that's what motivated him, and also him trying to persuade people that this thing is happening, and they wouldn't believe him when it was out in plain sight. And I think that's what fueled him to, to you know, bring it upon himself to make some kind of difference. Right. And um, you guys worked together before. You directed him in a film called Cesar Chavez. That's right. right. Yeah, so when, when you guys were working together on that film, did you guys already know you were going to work together in Narcos? Yeah, we were. Yeah, we about talked it. about it. We're yeah. like, hey, in is eight that years. the reason? Is that is was that a casting coup then? Yeah, but you said, you know what? In eight years, we should do Narcos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. even it came out, we were Because working in uh, in Sonora, in the north of Mexico, Hermosillo. Uh, in Hermosillo, Sonora, and, uh, and, and uh, on a way that's really close to where the, this, this well, where my character is from, uh, where Felix is from, and uh, we did experience Mexico, which I think it was very, I mean, we saved you a lot of uh, money and time, I guess, because uh, Michael and I were in the north of Mexico, in the fields of Mexico, where this story would have happened, you know, and recreating the 70s, which is the exact time where you know where, where uh, this this whole organization starts to starts to grow, you know, and to yeah. and back then he, he was telling me what to do for five months, and then you know in this one he was trying to tell me what to do <laughs> for eight months <laughs> as a character. Well, uh, Diego, also you. <laughs> no, he didn't land that one. Wait, I, I understood it. I think yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I can print it, it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> Diego, you also grew up in Mexico in the 80s. So in some way, this story is closer to home for you. Yeah. It's more personal. It is very personal. Uh, I, it is very personal also because it, it, it's the foundation of the mess we're living today. You know, what happened there in the 80s. And the case of Kiki Camarena is, it determines a lot on, on, on the relation between the states and, Me and Mexico. And um, uh, I remember being in the 80s as a kid. Uh, uh, I was six years old when, when, when this event happened. Uh, so I don't remember that. I guess my father was hiding this Mexico from, you know. For me, Mexico was something different. But then when the 90s came, I started having an opinion, worrying uh, uh, about the, the, the violence erupting. And, uh, and understanding how crucial the 80s were and how crucial what happened here. This basically is the story of, of something that got built that for a few years worked fantastically and then just fell apart and fell, fell into, into a way, and I'm talking about what's not in this season, like that fell into a way that today we are living horror No? It's the same. It spiraled out of control, but this is where this is where it started. And, and everything started. Hopefully, season five, closer to present. Are we going to see? Are we going to come? Because this war on drugs is never going to end. It's it's it's, it's, it's an endless I, I, war. I, I can neither confirm confirm or deny that season five. I, I think it's no. Is I, that I, a no I, comment moment? Can't, I can't confirm. I get, they they told me yesterday. I got a call. Uh, yeah, in, in a very special phone I have, and they said if it's a success in yes. India. We will have it's, right. it's, it's, it's on us. Can I have that true. special phone, please? Yeah. Yes. I would like to receive some special phone. 
special calls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we, we can talk on November 17th. Uh, and Diego, going a little off track, last night when we spoke, you told me, uh, you know, you were drunk. drunk. I was drunk. No, before that, I have to ask you guys. Um, <laughs> I have to ask you guys. Um, Wagner Mora, Pedro Pascal, these are characters and, and, and you know, that people... <laughs> Are you getting worried already? No, I just can't, I can't wait for this question. Because if you've been asked this question a lot, I get it a lot. Sorry, I have to ask you the, the you know, the cliché comparison question. Because uh, it's true, these are characters that we literally looked up to, okay, uh, for the past few seasons. And it is, um, it could be a bit uh, nerve-wracking, right, to step into these big, huge, humongous shoes. Or are you guys not thinking about it at all, treating this as a completely different independent show season? Like it didn't even happen before this. I, to be honest with you, I didn't think about it that way because it was, um, it wasn't like Pedro Pascal had enough and he's leaving Narcos. And I, you know, then they brought in little old me, you know, like I, uh, you know, it was a completely different, and, you know, and he wasn't, it wasn't like he played Kiki Camarena first three seasons and then I came in. And they're like, wait a minute, what the hell's up with this? It's uh, so it was no pressure. I mean, there and there was enough work. We were constantly traveling and working and had pages to memorize to be, you know, yeah. nervous about it. Too much to do to be nervous. Okay, then what about you? Uh, no, there's no pressure. I, I believe. I just got really sick. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, there's no pressure. I mean, you cannot think that way. Otherwise. Uh, uh, we wouldn't be doing this job. I mean, obviously, every time you see something, you're comparing that with the last thing you saw. Uh, yeah, the, absolutely, and, 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 and in fact, I see it. I, I, I see it differently. Those guys made this show so popular that it's the first time I don't have to worry for people to watch my work. <laughs> that that worry is out of the question. You know, it's like it's gonna come out, and they're gonna watch it. Like the first feeling of like. Being a theater actor is to be on your opening night and look out and see no one there. Just well, your parents. This time is not exactly not even my father. <laughs> so this time they're gonna be there, and then I saw it. You know, like you'll be very responsible not to see it, but I saw it, and I am really happy. And I I think these guys left the bar here, and we left it here. And if they there is a, a fifth season. They're gonna, higher, yeah. they're gonna take it higher and higher because the team they put together is amazing. It's amazing. And I have to be very, very honest. It's very bold to say, let's start all over again because I don't think this is the fourth season. I, this is Narcos Mexico. It's a different, it's a different project. Uh, there's, new, there's new directors, it's a new place, it's a, it's a new cast. Uh, um, yeah, it's everything is different. Uh, so I think they complement each other pretty well. But I don't think you're going to be thinking about the previous seasons when you watch this. I'm sure we won't. And that's amazing. That's really like inspiring. I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to use it next time anybody else asks this question. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Thank you. Diego. Appreciate Before we leave, we have something to say. Yeah, Spanish. we have something very embarrassing to say. Gonna say something all right, about okay, about okay. Time, but we, you, you remember all right, yes. Yeah, going a little off track, there's something that I got to know about Diego last night. His uh, grandmother was born in India, right? Yeah, I, I have, I, I have tell, a connection. Tell us about your spiritual connection to India. Oh, no, the spiritual connection is different. Let's talk about it. He's, he Baba. knows parts of Gita, he knew about Sai Baba, he spoke about Guruma, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us all about it. No, I don't think so. I mean, that, that, that is something I told you because I had four vodkas inside. Uh, well, we can get you four vodkas right now. I don't, I don't see how this connects to Narcos. I, I, I guess I don't want this to be in the same well, article. Spirituality is what we sell here instead of cocaine. <laughs> No, it's really Don't put nice. that, you get me to trouble. No, we really like that. Uh, it, it made us really happy that you have this connect to India. So it's like, you know, we're a little bit like, oh, you know us? Like, tell us about it. All the religious people are going to watch this show because you follow a spiritual leader in India. So talk about it. <laughs> okay, no, Shakur, you can't trouble him anymore. As you oh. understand, it's so personal. But, uh, but I, can, I can just say that I find so many similarities 
between the, the, the Indian culture and the Mexican culture and... Yeah, you guys have rice, we have rice, you have beef. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> besides rice, besides, besides the rice and curry, uh, there is so much in common. Uh, the contrast you, you, you live when you go out, the, the, and the richness in terms of the cultural diversity is, is amazing and, and it feels like being home here. And I think that's why you're going to love Narcos Mexico. Love it. And waiting Thank for it. Guys. And we, Alena, have to say something in Spanish. We have something to say in Spanish and we're going to do We it don't know if it makes any sense because we found it on Google Translate. Yeah, so I'm going to try my level best. That I, I, I'm going to just pretend like I know Spanish. So uh, I say line number one, you say line number two. Yeah, that's right. So, nos vamos a volver locos si. Tenemos que esperar más. Okay. Can you translate that for us? You win. You win. Uh, Can I do like a yes. terrible job? I don't know what you said. Okay. All right, all right. Let me, let me try this. Let me try this. Could you help me? How would I say that? Well, can you repeat what you said? No, nos no. vamos a volver locos. Huh? You gotta look at it and then. Ah. Nos vamos a volver locos. Nos vamos a volver locos. Woo. Tenemos que esperar más. Ah. We're gonna go crazy uh, because we gotta wait a little more. Yes, we We're gotta gonna wait. We're gonna go crazy if we have to wait any longer. 16th of this month, uh, Mexico, uh, Narcos, Mexico. We can't wait. Yeah, we can't wait. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, man. Are we Arun Arun? Hold the exact pura. Video pe rakh. Hold it, Roga. Are you niche? Bitha me, are you loco? Hey, mobile. Hey, mobile, China. Where are you? Mobile. Are you Aliya ji? Aliya, video, video. No, man. Are you mobile? Are you mobile? Are you mobile? Are you mobile? Yeah, look here. Thank you. Excuse me, yo. Yeah. So. Yeah. 